Hey beautiful soul, I'm Carolyn, I'm a shamanic practitioner, sound healer and artist and in this video I'm going to show you how you can paint your own Remo fiber skin frame drum. The first step to painting your drum is to decide which model you want to paint and I love working with the Remo Buffalo drum. It's a great model for shamanic drumming as it has like this holding cross and the other drum I sometimes paint is the Remo fiber skin frame drum. The surface is the same just this one doesn't have a cross. Yeah the next step would be to show you the materials that I use for this process. Okay let's start with the materials you're gonna need and just don't freak out like it looks like a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, step by step let's start like essentials I work with these acrylic markers and I use these Molotov markers and they're, they're really really good and you can also use um, acrylic paint and I, I use both but mostly the markers and for the acrylic paint it's good if you get like a high quality paint and um, there's like this, um, this star scala I can show you on this one like if it has like a high star rating that means like it's more durable that it's not gonna fade in light, so it's good to, to buy a good quality paint and not the cheapest one, you know, just invest in good paint and in all of your materials, invest in good stuff. And yeah, that's basically the big reason why acrylic, because you know, there's other markers on the market and like these things like that, like these gel pins or like these, but they, then they, won't, they won't last. They will fade after a while and like you really don't want your design to fade and same with um, with sharpie don't use sharpie they're gonna fade after one or two years depends on the color but um yeah i've seen people do stuff with sharpie and after a while it's just not it's not really permanent so just go acrylic um you can also use oil paint but i have no experience on that i use acrylic for everything so these markers and this paint and the markers come in different you know they have different tips like here i have one it's like a one millimeter and the black one comes in one millimeter. All the others, they start with a tip of two millimeter. So if you want extremely fine work, you're gonna need different markers. And there's also Posca markers, which are also acrylic markers, and they start with one millimeter. But we just happen to have these um, markers here, so I just have a whole range of these Molotov markers. So if you're gonna work with acrylic paint, you're also gonna use a brush. And yeah, for the rim of the of the drum painting, that definitely you're gonna need a brush. Like a big one like this is good, but also you can also work with a smaller one. It's just gonna take longer. And yeah, this one that's good to just put your paint in. And all of these paints they need to be diluted with water. So I have like this little thing here, just this little squeezer, and then it like just squeeze in like a few drops of water to just dilute it a little bit with water. And yeah, to seal it off you need a varnish and for these Molotov markers this is the fitting spray and it makes sense to ask in the art store where you buy the stuff if you buy markers like what spray is compatible and I use this one for the markers and I was asking them about like a brush on sealing stuff and they said no it might actually smear the markers so they said they really recommended to use a spray so this is the spray I use and it's really amazing and I would highly recommend that one. And okay, so what else do we have here? When you create your design, you might need one of these or like a, you know, like a ruler or anything to measure stuff out. If you go into like geometric art, like you, you will need some tools to create your template. Um, another thing you'll need is masking tape. That's basically to mask areas you don't want to paint. And also for the mallets, I use that. I'm gonna show that later. How I use the masking tape and you're gonna probably need scotch tape or like washi tape to glue papers together so papers I work a lot with just regular a4 paper you're gonna need that for the template or you can also use bigger like a2 paper for like the 16 inch drums it depends on the size of your drum then we're gonna need 
testing paper so you can just like you know do a few strokes try out the colors tr um, you know make yourself like a little chart it's always useful like this is like a chart i made for the markers i have here and then i i exactly see what the color looks like because um you know the cap looks kind of different than than here so i have that so i know what the color actually looks like and this one, now this is just decoration, it's not part of the design, <laughs> but um, I do smudge my drums and my art right at the end, so it's kind of part of it, actually. <laughs> then, like, tissues, in case you have, like, some smear, or, you know, to help mask parts, I'll, I'll show that when I um, create the mallet. And this is for creating your um, template. And this is graphite tracing carbon paper, and it comes in in black, in white, and in yellow. I haven't really needed yellow so far. So the black one is for tracing on the drums, like four and white, and the white paper is for tracing on darker backgrounds. So like if you paint the drum in one color and then um, black might be a bit hard to see, so you might use white on darker backgrounds. So yeah, that's that's pretty much all we need. So, here's a drum. It has this logo here, and that's like the first thing that you might not want to have this very contrasty logo on your drum when you paint it. So the first question that people ask me, how do you cover up this logo? First thing I do is I use a white acrylic marker. Just the outlines. Then I go over that with acrylic paint. To cover up the logo I use white with just a tiny 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 little sprinkle of yellow because this drum is not pure white we have like a, a slight hue into the yellow so if you use white um, like you will see the contrast between the white and the yellow so you need to experiment a little bit with getting just the, the color right. Okay, here's a little update because I've been making more drums and I came up with a different solution. So in this Mandela Lotus drum, I used a different marker to cover the logo and it's nature white. So it's not a pure white, it's a little bit more the, the color of, of, the, of the drum. And I decided to just cover the logo up like this because when you, when you zoom out you, you hardly notice it. And it's a really quick and efficient way to cover the logo up. Okay, now let's talk about the template. What's the template? The template is like the design you create before you apply anything on the drum. And it's a really good idea to try out on paper different ideas and refine them and then apply it on the drum. So there's different ways on how to create these. You can just use like a four papers and just um, glue four of them together with regular scotch tape like I did in this with this template here or you could also just take an A2 paper and just you know do this all in one piece and so when you have your papers glued together you just lay it on the floor and you're gonna create the circle by putting the drum on it. So just imagine this is just like a big piece of paper and you're gonna lay the drum on it this way or the other way. Take a pencil and then you just go around like this. Just, you know, make it a bit nicer. <laughs> just go around like this. Um, you can also use one of these, depending on your drum size, it might not work because it might not be big enough. Then you have your circle, then you cut it out, and then basically you have this template. Okay, so yeah, one way is just do it by hand, and if you do like geometric work, you're gonna measure it, you're gonna calculate it. And the other way is to do that on the computer with Photoshop. But that's, that's a whole new world and a whole topic in itself, how I do that in Photoshop. And I suppose that for most people this, this wouldn't be something they do. So I, I want to just talk about that if you're interested in that. Like, um, watch for Photoshop tutorials, how to create mandalas and stuff like that. And 
You can also work um, with images that you have on your computer and print it out and you might be able to just go to your local copy shop and get, let them print it out in, in the size that you need it. And you know, then you can also work with these templates. Okay, the next step is to apply the design on your drum. So you have your template, you have it cut out and everything. Then you're gonna position it on your drum. Just like, make sure it's all even, you know, like this wouldn't be even, just make sure it's really even. And yet this one is just a little bit smaller. And then you can use washi tape or masking tape to tape it. This washi tape is good because it, it really comes off easily. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't damage the drum surface. So you're gonna glue it on there. You usually have one here and one here. Um, and it's, it's important to glue it on there. And the reason for that is when you trace it it might move around and and then it's um you know your design gets uneven so it's good to you know to have at least two of these these ones or like you know the masking tape like that when you can use that as well and then then comes the fun work you're just gonna trace that stuff but yeah you now before you start that you know you need tracing paper and you know this paper has two sides one side is a little bit um, brighter and one is darker and the darker side where you see the lines that's the side that traces so that goes down. I'm just gonna demonstrate you that. You slide it under and this is gonna be a bit fun because I only have one hand <laughs> because the other one is holding the camera. Yeah when it's there just make a few strokes a few strokes and then check did it trace because sometimes it can happen that you just put it um, the wrong way and that even happens to me all the time so make a few and then see does it work and then just keep going and it's good to think in you know in areas like have your paper here and remember what area you traced and then move to the next one and move to the next one and before you take the tape off important do the last check like check did the lines trace do you have all the lines because sometimes there's so much that you might forget a few lines so make sure you have them all and when you're like yep i have them all then you take it off and the reason is when you when you take it off and then you know and you look and you're like oh there's one missing you will never be able to get it exactly right back on the same spot it might just be moving like one or two millimeters and then your design if it's a geometric design like that it's going to be ruined so keep these on till the very end and then take them off and then I'm going to the next step. So now it's time to actually start the painting process and color the lines with either the markers or the acrylic paint and a brush. And when you have all these lines going on there it's like really good to be mindful which areas need to be painted and which stay you know stay clear and for that it might be really good to have the template next to you or the photo of how you want it to look like and really make sure you're coloring the right ones and also when you work with these different colors it might be good to you know start with one color let it dry then do the next one like with this here I started with this one let it dry and then do the outline so you're not doing it all in one go the colors might just smear at these areas here and um, also with like bigger designs i do one part let it dry do the next part let it dry just to be safe so that's really a problem when you you know you draw that, that you smear part of your design so really be mindful that you don't do that because it's really hard to fix any mistakes that you make when you want to paint the rim of these drums there's like a few things you should know the material here on, on the top of the drum, like the fiber skin, that's very nice and smooth and it's really, really fun to paint. And this is very different. It's a very rough material. And you, t you need a lot of paint for this. And there's two ways how you can paint it. One would be to cover the top area with masking tape and then just go, go over with the brush. Do, 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 do. Well, a bit nicer than that, maybe. And um, I found though that when I dilute the acrylics with a bit of water then somehow it can happen that it permeates under the masking tape and you might not get a really clean edge so actually 
the safest way that I found to do it is just like take a brush and really you know really see where this edge is and you see that quite well and then just go here dup 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 just go down and then you know you when you continue you can use a bigger brush so that's how I do it and I usually use like a dark brown if I color the rim because I think it looks really cool it looks like a wooden frame but you can also just leave it as it is like with this drum that I create for myself I decided to just leave it you could also you know you could draw on this but this material is just really so bizarre I don't think it's gonna be easy to um, draw on it with them with the markers I think you're gonna ruin the the nib actually because it's so rough I don't think it's good for the markers but you could probably use like the brush but it's very hard to do like a fine design so if you if you want to do anything like just be mindful it might just not be not be so easy to make anything really super detailed here this drum I made for a client it's a custom design and I use the Remo fiber skin frame drum so it's not the buffalo frame drum and the difference is that it has like wooden frame and you can't really paint this I mean you could possibly but I, I just leave it how it is because it looks really nice so this drum I've just finished um, the painting process and now I'm gonna spray it so one more thing I have to do when I use this type of drum is I have to protect the wood from the spray because when you spray you know it's kind of like a nebula that just kind of gets everywhere so I have to protect this because I don't want the spray on here, I just want it on here. So an additional step we have for this type of drum, not for the buffalo drum, because for the buffalo drum you just, it's okay if the spray goes on the sides. So I use this masking tape and I just cover this whole area up. Okay, so now I have all of this covered and now we're ready, ready to spray. Maybe spraying is a bit new for you if you've never done it. Like for me it was new, like oh spraying, I've never really done spraying. It basically has instructions on how to do it, so it's not that hard. Um, so how do you do it? You shake it. Yeah, shake it a lot. I'm just kind of don't want to make too much noise right now. And then you hold it pretty close and spray. And don't spray too much because otherwise like you will have a runny like liquid coming down you'll have like these parts so don't spray too much and let it dry and then do a second coating and then that's what I do I do two coatings let it dry for five minutes spray again and then at the end it's important to move this upside down and spray like the remaining spray out it's just a little bit and then you know so this stays clear otherwise this clogs up and you cannot use the spray anymore so it's really important but all of the instructions are also on the bottle on how to do that and then you let it dry and you're good to go then you have your drum yay um yeah one one thing before the final yay like do this outside like it's it's quite stinky and all of the sprays are stinky so um when do it inside like your house is gonna smell really bad <laughs> so I do it outside and the downside with that is like when it's raining I can't spray when it's super windy I can't spray because then the spray just kind of moves away from the from the drum so I need good weather for spraying and I also leave the drum outside for at least two or three hours to um, to dry a little bit and to kind of yeah, get the stink out so yeah it's a really good idea to do that side When you use these markers, you also have to shake them and you have to pump the tip. You have to go up and down a little bit and kind of um, use this extra piece of paper to kind of see that it's flowing. Hey kitty! <laughs> and um, one tricky thing is that sometimes more um, paint comes out and sometimes less. So you have like areas that are a bit darker and a bit lighter. And it also is kind of cool, it gives it like an interesting effect of you know it's it's organic it's it's not just like machine made and for this kind of design you can use any color you wish i like brown because it looks a little bit like a henna design so i really like the dark brown i also created this design with gold it's, it's always a little different because it's reflecting the light so gold is also really fun to use 
The good thing about this kind of design in terms of it leaves a lot of the structure of this drum, like you have this beautiful texture you see, and it's also good to not cover the whole drum with paint in terms of the sound. They still sound good even if they're totally covered, but it's, it's better not to apply the paint too thick and the best way is to just leave, give it a little empty space. Next I'm gonna show you like this Celtic design. It also it, it plays with the with the contrast like you have like you have paint you have the white so I think this still gives the this, the drum like a little <laughs> space to breathe and with this type of design yeah you're you, you're coating the drum like you have like you have uh, different layers especially with this one which has these different galaxy layers um, it takes a long time to get this done it takes a lot of time to let it dry and then the next one let it dry and do the next one it looks stunning but if sound quality is your main concern I would not recommend it because it's really it's hard on the border that you coat it too much and then it loses a little bit of sound um, however I've seen people that are like yeah the, the sound doesn't matter so much they really want a beautiful design and it's it's a personal thing and it doesn't sound horrible or anything like it's just a little difference can just give you like a little demonstration. I don't know if you hear the difference um, on the microphone or not. I'm not sure about it. It's kind of hard to tell because they all sound a little bit different. So they're all a little higher, a little lower. So like kind of hard to judge. And I also paint the mallet. That's what it looks like when it comes right out of the box. It also has this very, very intense Remo logo. And then when I paint it, I basically cover it up with black paint and then let it dry. And then add, like with gold and acrylic marker, like add what I want to add. Um, when you want to paint this and you just want it partially painted and the reason for that is I like to hold wood rather than hold this and you know what you grip all the time in your fingernails it, it might just come off because it's just a very exposed area so I personally like to do them like this like only have half of them so I can still just have the natural wood in my hand and a good idea to get this smooth is to use like a little masking tape tape that around here and around here you can also bring it up to here and then when you spray them with acrylic spray later you will not spray this part because you, do, you don't want acrylic spray here so you tape this off and protect it and same here and you tape this off so you only spray this area because it's impossible to spray an area you need to mask what you don't spray. One last thing that I really want to mention is when I create these drums for people and I'm done with the creation process, I also use sage to cleanse it and I activate it in ceremony. So if you want to use a drum for like shamanic work, shamanic drumming, it's a good idea like after you're done with painting that you bless it, that you activate it, that you link it to your energy and that you do like a journey to meet the spirit of the drum. And even if it's like a vegan drum and it doesn't have a real animal, like everything has a soul so even a vegan drum has a soul so journey to get to know the spirit of your drum and like yeah the saging it's really really nice so i really recommend you do that I mean, you don't have to do that but like many people they, they want to treat their drum as a sacred tool as you use that for healing for journeying for deep inner work so you you want to honor your instrument and yeah, when I make um, drums for clients, I do that. I do the in energetic work. But if you just do your own, then you do that work on your own as well. So yeah, I just want to add that quickly. <laughs> Makes it really special and really sacred and connects you with your drum and you really feel that bond. And that's really valuable for your healing work. So yeah, just wanted to add that. So another update. It's been a process of many weeks, <laughs> the whole process of making this video. And I spent like so many hours um, filming this while I was making drums and custom orders and then filming, refilming, editing and then 
do some technical problems, losing a lot of material again and refilming and it's been really a huge project. And anyway, I'm proud that I made it, like I finally finished it. And if you feel like this has served you, this has helped you and you created your drama and you're happy with it, you know, feel free to give back. I have a donation button. If you go on the About Me page on YouTube, it links you to the PayPal donation thing. And I also have that link on my website, carolynobles.com. It's at the footer menu, so you know if you want to give back, like it's always great and amazing. And I would love to hear from you in the comments if this was useful for you, if you created your own drama. I, I want to know, like, what did I inspire? What spark did I start? You know, what happens from here with your drum? So if there's anything you want to share, please share. Please let me know. And I see you in the next video. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. Create your drum. Create your magic. And see you soon. As well, how it is. It all is well, how it is.